You may not be able to tell it from this shot, but Hyper Bowl is one of my favorite arcade games of all time. This is the PC version, and I wanted to make a controller that would allow me to play it a little bit more realistically. In this video, I'm going to give you all the resources you need to make a controller just like this, from the laser cut files to the Arduino. I'm using the CD version, but you can still pick this thing up for 99 cents on Steam. I'd really encourage you to not get caught up with the laser cutting part of the project. This game is so fun and just a kind of a cool family game, kind of a cool just pick it up and play a game that there's really no reason to limit yourself if you don't have a laser cutter. If you do, uh, I've included a link to my exact design in the uh, description and when you hit generate, you're going to get the same angles and same pieces that I have and you can break them up and put your holes wherever you want to put them and all that kind of stuff in something like Inkscape. Um, you can come in here and change the angle to like a 75 degree angle and you're going to see that that front face will be uh, less of an angle and there's just anything you want to do you can do with this program. So I love it. Uh, once I did that I took it and I cut out the file at my friend Colby's house because he has a bigger laser so we used uh, that to cut some thicker material and then began to put it together. So these are the pieces of the console as they've come out of the laser and been stained. Uh, one of the things I just love about the laser is I can go on there and take my little uh, caliper and measure out on whatever, 25 millimeters or whatever, and, and you are just going to get an absolutely perfect fit for that button. Uh, I left myself a little bit of leeway here for the trackball. Um, but man, just just a great fit and nice. Uh, this this wood's a little thick; it's like about a mil too thick, but that's going to work fine. Um, the thing I have to do now is actually drill the holes for the uh, mounting screws, and I want to be careful because I don't want to um, mount it crooked at all. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and get this thing perfectly lined up so that my uh, screws can go through. And uh, I'm not going to actually mount the trackball until the whole thing's together because I can't tell. Uh, I mean, I could look at the picture, but can't exactly tell which one of these is front and which one's back, and that does matter. Otherwise, my uh, bowling ball will roll backwards. So I'm going to drill these holes out, and then we're going to put the case together. I decided I'm going to drill this from the front side, so I have these little blocks here to keep the thing up in the air. And then uh, we're not really worried about the orientation of it right now because I'm not permanently attaching it. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this square along these edges and along this edge of the thing just so that we are perfectly square. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do it in an up and down orientation in case this thing is a little bit taller than it is wide or wider than it is tall, but uh, I feel pretty good with that. And that will get it done. Okay, so uh, I've got the holes drilled and I think they're definitely good enough for my purposes. And uh, I've got my wife here as an extra set of hands. She's the one who did all the hard work staining this thing. So we're gonna begin the process of putting it together. It is a bit like a puzzle and we don't necessarily know which way is up and down. So uh, I think this is going to be the back. See, so yeah, if you wanna hold that, we'll get this kinda in. These things are kinda hard to take apart once you get them together. So you kinda wanna make sure you have it right. Uh, depending on the, is that right? I don't, I think I'm bumping. It's not all the way in. Okay. Uh, yeah, you want to make sure you have it right because it can be pretty tricky to get apart without damaging it. The tolerances are so tight on these lasers, it's it's incredible. Like you don't even need glue. Um, something like this that's going to take a beating, I may decide to put some bracing in the corners. Uh, but that looks pretty dang good. So this one can go on the front. We can't put the bottom on because um, we need to have uh, the electronics wired up. but. I think that looks good. Yeah, this isn't as tight as the one the K40 makes. Now I am probably gonna go ahead and run some Gorilla hot glue in the corners of these, almost like a, as if it was a caulk gun. There we have it. We have a completed box. And it actually, I was expecting these to be a lot more wonky than they are, but they're pretty dang good. Uh, you know, these are not, tight finger joints for being an angle but uh it's gonna hold together like i said i'm gonna run a bead of <laughs> hot glue in there just to stop it from popping apart because this thing is gonna take some abuse i mean you're gonna be ramming on that uh trackball so there we go we'll at least pop this button in so you can see what that looks like but that <laughs> is the box one of the things to consider when i'm melting this thing is that the your hand is going to go over top of it and there's a decent chance that it's going to hit the screw 
and uh, I really want to countersink these screws a little bit. And I was playing around with these. I don't love this style of countersink, uh, but this sort of classic one that's kind of cone shaped uh, works really well. So I was thinking that I'm going to use these flat head machine screws or flat topped machine screws. And uh, I think that's the right one there. And I want to make sure that that is slightly below the surface. Um, don't love the look of that, but it'll work fine for our purposes. So the first thing I think I need to do is to embiggen these holes a little bit. I do not like, I like this brushless drill for the, uh, for the power for hammer drilling. I hate it for regular drilling because it just makes so much dang noise. For anyone playing at home, these are number 832 uh, two-inch screws. That's a little bit longer than I need, but um, the way this thing mounts is made to be mounted on some kind of plate underneath the thing, so you don't really see the screws at all. But uh, I'm gonna go all the way through, and then I'm gonna put a washer and kind of grab this part. So, we'll see. So uh, we're gonna pop some washers across these things here just to give it a little bit of a bridge. We're probably gonna use a little bit of glue to hold the uh, trackball in once everything has been finalized. And we're gonna maybe use a nut driver. That's the wrong washer. Maybe use a nut driver to put these things down. I feel like a nut driver is kind of an underrated tool. Um, I actually don't know this one's deep enough. We're gonna... Now we're gonna put the nuts on. The thing about the nut driver is you want to have them organized. You can't just throw them in a bucket somewhere and hope you're going to find the right one. You need your metrics and you need your standards and you need them organized. I've got mine on the wall over there. And uh, if you're going to if you're going to live the nut driver life, you got to be all in. Now to get that final torque, we're going to go ahead and put it on its side. And I'm going to use, I'm going to do this by hand. This is plastic. I don't really want to crack it. Um, so we're going to use the screwdriver on one side and the nut driver on the other side and we're just gonna use this screwdriver to turn it down for what and we're gonna do it like we're torquing the head on an engine we're gonna do a quasi star pattern and there you have it and we're countersunk so you're not gonna get any kind of injuries by scraping the top of that I didn't have a set plan for the front of this thing when I lasered it out. In fact, I made the same panels in both uh, buttonhold and not buttonhold. And uh, when I decided to laser it, I just stuck two buttonholes in it and didn't really have much of a plan on how I was going to do that. I wasn't sure if I was going to treat this thing like a mouse or whatever. But um, as I started playing the game a little bit more, I realized that you do use the enter key a lot. And I was going to do some kind of modification. I thought about putting an enter button up here or putting an enter button back here, but my beautiful wife came up with the idea that why not just make it that when you push both buttons at the same time, it simulates hitting enter. And uh, so that's what I did. Um, I'm gonna put these things in and uh, because these are, you know, this is not really an arcade type thing. They're just, you know, a couple of buttons. I'm gonna actually use some of the cheaper switches. I'm 99% sure these are real, uh, hap buttons but i'm going to go ahead and use the cheap micro switches in here because you're not going to really care as much about the feel on a left and right button so um, i'm going to screw these in and then i will get to the arduino part of the project so i soldered the wires onto the micro switch and uh, one of the nice things about using the pro mini the arduino pro mini that i'm using is that it has two ground pins right next to each other so i don't have to do any kind of weird thing to split them or anything like that. We're gonna shove that switch in. We're gonna shove this switch in. Uh, there's a whole lot of different styles of these switches. Generally the white ones are the better ones, but the red ones are definitely serviceable. They're plenty good um, for most projects. You're just not gonna get the exact same feel that you would get from 
a 1980s arcade. Uh, so anyway, I've got these in here, and uh, I guess I could turn them the same direction, but uh, the board I'm using is the Pro Mini, and one of the tricks this thing has up its sleeve is that it can emulate a keyboard, and so I am going to put a pin to ground and a pin to, uh, I guess it would be pin two and three, and that is going to simulate hitting the left arrow, the right arrow, and then hitting them both at the same time is gonna simulate hitting the enter key. And uh, the other thing I've gone back and forth with several times is how I wanna deal with the wiring coming out of this thing. I'm thinking eventually I'm gonna transition this thing over to an ESP32 and it'll have a battery in it. But for the most part, I don't really wanna worry about charging it right now. So what I think I'm gonna do is just go kind of simple. I'm gonna use a little uh, USB hub like this and just run something like this out the back, which is not the cleanest solution, but it will allow me to just, you know, hook up an extension cable and plug it in with one cable. I could run one out for the Arduino and one in for the 12 and one board that will hook this thing up. But uh, for now, I'm gonna keep it simple, just run this out the back and uh, that'll have to do. So there you have it. I still have some stringiness to deal with after this thing uh, fully dries. I just drip a little bit of glue, uh, a lot of glue around the sides here just to give it a little bit of extra support. I've mentioned this in other videos, but this wood will rip before this glue lets loose. Um, so you can put um, IPA, I use 91% on there to get it loose. I use a little bit as sort of a Loctite on these uh, buttons. I use a little bit as Loctite on these screws. It holds the boards down. Again, IPA, it'll come right off. Uh, I didn't get too fancy with the back. I just drilled a hole and put the cable out there. Um, I may do something different in the future, but for now, this works. So when you flip it over, we have our controller. So I'm gonna hook the thing up to the computer and see how it works. And here it is. I am not able to show you the whole desk, but this is a little piece of what I'm working on. And as you can see, we have the Hyperbole game and the different lanes, the pins of Rome going on the high seas where the boat moves, going through the streets of San Francisco and Yosemite and Tokyo and the classic bowling lane. We have the trackball with its mouse buttons down there in front. And I'm going to show you a little bit of action and a little bit of gameplay. So there you have it, Hyperbowl. I can't recommend this project enough, whether you build a full arcade cabinet or just a simple trackball or even just buy a trackball off Amazon. Uh, it's just a fun project, a fun, quick game, and something you really got to consider. So hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.